You still don't own a Tamo Shanter? Yay stuff! You still don't own a compact armada? What are you waiting for, HP to make one? Inside jokes, don't ask. <laughs> then again, having said that, I heard HP likes to shut up. <laughs> yeah, my friends are goofs. <laughs> I forget what was in here. Something. I got a random Scottish flag from a pound shop. And, yeah, one of these. I also got, like, a really crappy pair of uh, headphones that were... He, he sent them to me for the novelty of it. Uh, this is Video Sans Frontier who sent me all this stuff, by the way. Uh, he sent me a pair of earbuds, I think, from a pound shop that... Uh, they're, like, really crappy earbuds, but they have the Scottish flag on the side. It's like... They, they look weird. They're like a rectangle. I'll, I'll have to get them uh, and show them later in the video. But he also sent me a working compact armada. Now, I tested it out. The thing does work. Uh, I swapped parts around. What I ended up having to do is take all the parts out of this dead one that I had here, which is, I've shown this one in a prior video. It's a 4120 with the passive matrix display. I took the trackpad out. I took the floppy out. took the hard drive out. Um, and I also swapped the keyboards because as you can see this one has the UK keyboard on it so I had and I would have kept the UK keyboard on that one just because sometimes I get lazy but this keyboard doesn't work properly at all so I moved it onto the parts machine here and moved the American keyboard uh, onto this one now what is the difference between these two this is the compact Armada 4130T and the T on the end designates that it is an active matrix display. And that is pretty nice. Because uh, there's still a little bit of ghosting, but it's nowhere near as bad as on a passive matrix display like this one. I've determined that the motherboard in uh, this particular compact armada is bad. And that's why uh, he ended up sending me a different one. I also took the battery holder off, and there's that extra battery. <clears throat> so... There you have it. There's the trackpad that I took out. That's kind of cool that you have a modularized trackpad like that. So I took the RAM, stuck it in here, put the trackpad in here as well, put, new, put the other keyboard in, and of course stuck the hard drive, the floppy drive, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Stuck all those in there. And to my surprise, I booted right up into the version of Windows that was on this particular compact. So let's check it out. System options not set. Because the battery is bad, the CMOS battery. Luckily, in these laptops, it's a plug-in battery. Sixteen megabytes of RAM, that's what I put in there. There's that floppy. So it's nice to finally show you guys a working example of this machine. I plan to use this as a Windows 95 laptop. Uh, one thing I really need to get for this is a PC card um, CD-ROM drive since this doesn't have a built-in one. So I'll get around to getting one of those eventually. I need to find one that has DOS drivers. This is interesting. The previous installation of this had a CD round drive called the Backpack. Now, I've never seen one of these or dealt with them, but uh, uh, Video Sans Frontier has dealt with these before. So, they work apparently, but this one doesn't have a backpack, so I'll just boot it up as is. It doesn't appear to have a hard drive indicator LED. But there you go, it boots right into Windows 95. So I was able to test this and it works great. Trackpad works, keyboard works. Pretty cool stuff. 
So thank you very much, Video Sans Frontier. This is pretty sweet. I like this laptop. As you can see, the person that owned this laptop still had their installation on it, and that was uh, Skill Base at Training Incorporated, Visual Business Solutions. And they didn't delete any of their stuff either. There was, um, there. it looks like they have like accounting and sales figures documents for Excel on this uh, laptop as well. They left all of them on there. There's like, uh, there's employee information and things like that. So I'm going to have to delete all that crap. Uh, I'm going to probably leave the installation as is. I'm just going to delete the files because it has stuff that I like. It has, um, Office 97 installed. Just open up Word to demonstrate that. There you go, Word 97. That's exactly the version of Word I, I like to use on Windows 95 as well. I've discovered uh, Word, Microsoft Word 95 is a little bit more limited than this. Word 97 was great. I like this a lot. So that's pretty nice. I'm thinking that the person who owned this machine dealt mostly on floppy disks, but had some accounting information stored on the hard drive. So. Actually, it was this machine, but, you know. Not much else in the way of programs. It's pretty bare-bones, basic installers. They didn't really... looks like they really used it for business, and that was it. Uh, it's a different time, back when computers were actually meant for doing nothing but serious work. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll open the word back up and demonstrate that the keyboard works on this particular one. Keyboard feels a little mushy, but it's all right. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Yep. All the characters work on this keyboard, so we're good. One thing I thought was interesting is when I was uh, swapping the keyboards around, the keyboards don't actually use a connector you insert anywhere. They use a ribbon cable with contacts that kind of rest against some contacts on the motherboard. So you just kind of have to hope that those still work after a, a long time. But they seem to have held up for almost 20 years, so that's pretty nice. So... There you go. That is this Compaq Armada um, 4130T Active Matrix Display, which was expensive back in those days. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I hope to use this laptop for uh, vintage software, some DOS games and stuff like that. But I can't really do... The reason this is such a short video is I can't really do much with it because I don't have the, uh, the CD-ROM drive yet, the PC card CD-ROM drive. So I'll be getting one of those eventually. And then uh, I'll, maybe I'll make some more videos of this uh, laptop when I uh, get around to that. So I just thought I'd show this to you guys. Uh, pretty cool laptop. Active Matrix laptops back at, are seem to be from this era seem to be a little bit hard to find. Uh, so, or at least when you do find them, they they cost a little bit more. But uh, you know, something like that. Uh, they're they're harder to find because passive matrix screens were a little bit more reliable. So these laptops tend to last. Apart from this one with the bad motherboard. Very bad motherboard. Uh, this is an example of an active matrix screen that has survived. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.